Coming up on this episode of The Social Hour, we're going to talk about Facebook Home. Do you want it on your phone? Plus, Twitter cards. How are they better than the iOS app? And Shazam for fashion. Is that a good idea? All that and the rise of an app called Whisper up next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth provided by the new Winamp for Android, featuring wireless sync and one-click iTunes import. Now with free daily music downloads and full-length CD listening parties. Download it for free at winamp.com slash Android. Bandwidth for the Social Hour is brought to you by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is The Social Hour with Sarah Lane and Amber MacArthur, episode 105, recorded April 5th, 2013. This episode of The Social Hour is brought to you by Shutterstock.com. With over 900,000 high-quality video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 30% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use the offer code SOCIALHOUR4. And by 99designs, the world's largest online graphic design marketplace. 99designs connects businesses seeking quality, affordable designs with a community of 200,000 graphic designers. Visit 99designs.com slash social hour to receive a free design consultation. That's 99designs.com slash social hour. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another fun-filled episode of The Social Hour. And from very rainy Petaluma on this fine Friday, I am Sarah Lane. And I'm Amber MacArthur from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. It is not rainy here. In fact, it is quite sunny. However, it is cool. And I did see flurries today. I was not so happy about that. And Sarah, it's like spring is, it's not coming. Like it wants to come, but it's not coming. It's very uh, disappointing. Yeah, we've had, um, we've had weird weather here also. Although, at least as far as I can recall, it hasn't rained in a while. Because I got this new car a couple months ago and... Mm -hmm. It's like I, I, I kept sort of thinking, like, should I get it washed or is it going to rain? Or So I was sort of thinking about the fact that it hadn't rained. And it is definitely April showers around here um, for the last week or so, uh, which is not a bad thing because it keeps the hills nice and green. But it doesn't, it doesn't feel like shorts weather anytime soon. Yeah, no, uh, it doesn't feel like that either here. So, Sarah, a big week in social media news. Many people anticipating that uh, Facebook was going to announce the Facebook phone. Of course, that did not happen, and we got something else. Uh, yeah. Leo was very excited about it, actually. <laughs> it's okay. Hi, Leo. <laughs> yeah, Amber says hi. Have you started yet? Uh, yes, yes, we just started. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Do you want to say hello? And I, and I just... Yeah. That's why you shouldn't come in on Fridays. I shouldn't, I shouldn't be here. I'm too nice. Hi, Leo. Hi. Hey. Hey. Sorry. That's okay. Who cares? Hi. 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 It's what you do. Hey, so, Amber, back to Facebook Home. Uh, we, we covered it live on Tech News Today because the uh, announcement was live. There was a live feed of it. Um, of course, all of the tech blogs were live blogging it, and it coincided with our show. So we were kind of going back and forth and, and keeping up to date on it. And for anybody who didn't follow the news or just kind of needs a recap, it's really a combination. Uh, you know, the event was a, a combination. There is Facebook Home, which is a software layer that sits on top of Android, which is something that you can install that basically takes over what would be your home screen that shows, you know, your home screen of, of your favorite apps on page one, but he, also your lock screen. So that's, you know, when your phone is locked before you swipe to open or have to, you know, enter a passcode, that sort of thing. And that is actually shipping um, with a, the, a phone from HTC called the HTC First that uh, I believe is available starting on April 12th but will be available to download on a variety of other phones with other devices coming soon, including tablets, which Facebook uh, didn't give a specific date for, but said in the next few months. So a variety of devices. And then, um, and then they went through uh, a, a, a variety of, 
features of you know why anybody would want this. Now, of course, on the social hour, this is all very interesting to us because this assumes that the person using the phone is heavily into Facebook, uses Facebook as a means of communication, is very interested in their news feed on Facebook. That's certainly not everybody. In fact, some people stay away from Facebook like the plague, so this wouldn't be the phone for you. But even for people like us, Amber, I mean, I'm... I'd, Facebook isn't necessarily my favorite social network, but I think that it's necessary for me to be on it because that's how I communicate with a lot of people. But I don't know if I want Facebook branding on any smartphone that I already have a Facebook app for that seems to work for me pretty well. What do you think? Yeah, you know, I thought this was one of the weirdest announcements that has taken place in the tech industry in the past year or two. You know, it was one of those situations where I was watching the live feed and I was waiting for something I thought a little more extensive to happen and then it just didn't happen and it kind of fell flat. So for me, it does seem like maybe a Facebook-centric device is something that would only appeal to really a small segment of the population. And the big issue, Sarah, I think, is that that segment of the population, I think it has been dwindling a little bit as far as being uh, so attached attached to Facebook in their lives, maybe teens, for example, you know, they like other services out there like Snapchat and uh, just different places that they can go and exchange photos and other things. So it feels like this announcement is about two or three years too late. Yeah, there's also, there, there have been a lot of, a lot of people have had some time to, uh, there was a Facebook event that was uh, at, at their headquarters down in, um, in the Silicon Valley, and a variety of journalists were down there, so not only were they there for the event, but there's a little bit of a show and tell afterwards where you can pick up the phones and, and play around with Facebook Home, and they've got these ideas of chat heads, which is the name for uh, friends that you can access and be able to message with and, and send stuff to, kind of on top of whatever app you may be using uh, via Android, which is kind of interesting because it doesn't, it doesn't assume that if you're messaging somebody, and this is SMS or, or within Facebook Messenger, that, that you have to switch over to that from whatever you're doing, which is, I mean, that's what I have to do on iOS. I'm either in it, my texting app or my Facebook Messages app, or I'm doing something else. But it's um, what, one of the more interesting uh, breakdowns of what seems to be wrong with Facebook Home uh, came from O Malik over at GigaOM. And, and he says, you know, there's a few things that, that really bother him about it. Number one is this is a layer over a launcher, right? That's, that's, that, that's the word I'm looking for, um, over Android. But because Android is so open in the nature of how it works, this is now giving Facebook access to a lot of stuff uh, you, you know, on the hardware side of your device, specifically where you are. Okay, well... Geolocation is not a huge deal for some people, and it's certainly something that isn't new, Facebook being able to geolocate you, but if Facebook is interested in where you go the most frequently, what your patterns are, where you live, it can, if it can figure out where you seem to go and then not leave for like eight hours on a regular basis, it, chances are maybe that's your house if you're, if you're, if you're there more than you're anywhere else. And um, if, if uh, Facebook Home was able to access your accelerometer, it would know maybe at what point you were driving versus walking or even jogging or maybe you're at the gym. There's all sorts of data that collectively perhaps Facebook could put together to create a more uh, complex profile of you. Well, why does that matter? Well, it matters because Facebook is eventually going to be um, serving up ads um, on the uh, on, on on the cover feed, which is sort of your 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 main page um, when when you fire up uh, your phone and Facebook Home is on top of it. So in that sense, it's a little bit of a ah, doom and gloom. You know, Facebook's out to get us. But Amber, I really do think that this is something that we should all be thinking of. I mean, maybe you don't care if Facebook knows where you drive, but if you mm -hmm. do. That's something that you have to believe they're they're going to take advantage of. Yeah, I mean, I think there are just multiple levels of issues with this. I think, you know, when I was watching it and hearing about it and reading more about it, it felt like a really bad SNL skit, a skit where they said, you know, at, hey, what face, guess what? Facebook is going to come and take over your entire phone. And then all of a sudden, you know, all of those things you see on Facebook are going, going to be front and center on your phone. And I think for most people, again, I just have to go back to the idea that I think it's just a tiny little audience that this really uh, appeals to. And uh, I think there are privacy concerns. I think there are also concerns with the fact 
fact that people have a hard enough time being productive on their devices anyhow, let alone in an environment where all of a sudden people are front and center. I don't want people front and center on my phone necessarily. I want to be able to do things and get things done. And Facebook is not necessarily the environment that I do that in. Mm -hmm. So um, all around, you know, as much as I've tried to think, okay, what are the positives here? I really cannot think of any. And uh, I'm just very skeptical about the future of uh, Facebook Home. And I, for one, I definitely am not going to use it except for maybe trying it out for uh, reporting purposes. Yeah, I, I, I definitely haven't been able to try it out firsthand. But uh, there are, I've read a, a few articles from people saying it really looks nice. It's executed well. The whole thing is, it, it, it visually, uh, some people put a lot of effort into it. But that just, you know, that still assumes uh, that that we that we enjoy that Facebook experience. Amber, I have way too many friends on Facebook that just they don't need to be front and center in my life, and particularly not my phone, which is something that I'm looking at constantly, a million times a day. So, you know, we were sort of joking about this on on TNT yesterday. Does this mean that? You know, you weed out the friends that, that really don't matter all that much more so that Facebook Home becomes <laughs> a better service for you. Well, that's not the, that's not what Facebook wants to hear. You know, they want yeah. us to all have more and more connections, not less and less. So it's, I, I'm with you. I think that this is, it's a very interesting concept. I, I will be very curious to see who of my Android using uh, uh, friends say, nope, this is, this is something that I want. I'm really happy with this and why. Uh, and and if not, you know, does it crash and burn? And then what does Facebook do? Uh, mm -hmm. Some people in uh, chat have noticed uh, also, and are pointing out the the fact that that Facebook can access stuff uh, that that that's that's involved in your hardware, like an accelerometer, that sort of thing, is certainly not new. I mean, it's something that our smartphones can access anyway. And that's true. It's just that Facebook is again. I mean, they're in the business of of serving up uh, as relevant ads as possible. So. You know, in iOS, for example, sure, I guess somebody at Apple could know when I was in the car, but you know, I'm not getting an ad necessarily that's really reflecting that. Uh, I mean, I guess there's iAds too. It's it's a uh, it, it's sort of a losing game here. You know, we're all going to get uh, advertised to and marketed to when we're using free services. I think I think awareness is really what what I think is the biggest potential issue here because. It's hard to know. It's hard to know the mm. the kinds of stuff that that Facebook and other companies um, want to want to get from us and why. Yeah, I mean, and historically, like you touched on, I think Facebook just does not have a good track record. So it's not as though other companies in the technology industry aren't doing similar things as far as getting access to information on your phone. But the difference is that Facebook, uh, in many cases, has really abused this power over the past few years a couple of times in a significant way. So uh, a big issue there. Now, Sarah, I know we're going to talk about some uh, Twitter news, uh, the iOS app updated with card and app link integration. I actually don't know this much about uh, this particular item. Yeah, so this is... Um Twitter's official uh, iOS app, and and it is just iOS. So we're we're kind of going from from the Android folks over to the iOS folks. And the idea behind this is that Twitter has uh, for some time been pushing the notion of Twitter cards. What that mm -hmm. means is, and this is something that uh, has been available on the web web version of Twitter is, let's say, Amber, you uh, I send a tweet and say this is a great article and you link to something over at the New York Times. Um, and I expand that tweet, which is something that Twitter offers. It'll be sort of like a nice little headline, maybe uh, the, the picture that's associated with, that, associated with that New York Times article, maybe the first few sentences of it. So you get like a really good snippet of what you're linking to, which provides context. We all know that sometimes when people say, you know, they link to something without any context, it's like, well, I, I, I want to know a little bit more about where I'm going. So Twitter Cards provides that extra context while still allowing us to keep things short and sweet in 140 characters. So the iOS uh, app, and this is for uh, iPhone and, and the iPad because there's native apps for both, uh, does now, let's see if I could just launch it here. Where are you, Twitter? I've got Twitter and then I've got Tweetbot. Now Tweetbot, what's interesting about this is, jeez uh, Louise, <laughs> how do I find my... There we go. It's way under everybody. Uh, Tweetbot, it's important to note, is a third-party app that I love, and, and I'm not alone. A lot of people love it. But it doesn't actually work this way because Twitter cards are unique to Twitter. Um, so let me find something. Let me find something here that's a really good example of how this would work. Okay, that, that wouldn't be a good link. Uh, here we go. No. Um, uh... Okay. 
Okay, so here's a New York Times article. This was, mm -hmm. this was shared by the New York Times, but the link could be shared by anybody. I've expanded the tweet. So there's a little, there's a little tweet here. There's a, there's a uh, link to the story. And now this is the Twitter card, right? So it's telling me, okay, this is from the New York Times. I see who wrote the story. Here's a headline and here's sort of the beginning of it. So again, it gives me a little bit more of a, am I ready to commit? Am I ready to go ahead and, and, and click all the way through? So that's the notion of a card. Now cards can also work now for apps. And that's pretty cool, Amber, because if for example, uh, somebody checks in on Facebook, um, I see an Instagram link there, but I know that's not gonna work because because uh, that's a uh, uh, Facebook property. Somebody checked in on Foursquare, which is one of Twitter's new partners. Not only would I see an expanded uh, version of the tweet, but I would also get a link to download the app straight from the Twitter card, which is great uh, for discovery okay. for Twitter partners. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, they have just a handful of partners right now, but obviously that number will continue to grow, which is cool. Uh, Flickr as well, uh, you know, we've got Flickr here, we've got, we've got a, a photo of the Flickr photo that Denise Howell of This Week in Law, which precedes uh, the social hour on Fridays, right here. And then what's cool is that I've got a little link here to open in the Flickr app. I already have the Fli Flickr app downloaded. If I didn't, Amber, it would say, uh, you know, link to download Flickr app, and then it would send me over to the App Store. So for, for discovery, for, for services that, uh, that people share on Twitter, it's a mm. really good idea for yeah. for them to all get hooked up. So this really is, it's putting the official Twitter app in a place that third-party apps can't compete with. And that makes me wonder, and Leo and I were talking about this yesterday on iPad Today, you know, at what point do I say, well, I love TweetBot, but TweetBot is sort of half an app compared to all the other stuff that, that the official Twitter app that's that's created internally can do. Yeah, no, it seems like a really smart move. That makes a ton of sense to me. And, and definitely, uh, unlike uh, Facebook Home is something that I would use on a regular basis. Another thing that I would use, which I think is a good thing for Twitter, is that they have uh, expanded their Twitter for Business website uh, with more how-to content and uh, information about how businesses can jump on board with Twitter and potentially, you know, make money. They can learn about Twitter advertising. And, uh, you know, it, it's good just to see them pushing out more content, I think, because a lot of people, as much as they love Twitter, they're are still businesses who haven't quite figured out uh, what to do with it and uh, and how does it uh, fit into your business plan? So uh, the site has uh, quite a bit more information on it. Yeah, that's true. They also they also put together a pretty nice video mm -hmm. um, on their on their on their business site and it's it's uh, as marketing land, which is which is the article that I that uh, I was reading about this earlier notes. It's pretty basic. So if you feel like uh, you're doing a pretty great job on Twitter and, and interacting with the community, uh, if, 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 if it's for business purposes, some of it might seem pretty obvious, but I think that this is a really, it's a really great resource that Twitter puts together because Amber, as you and I know, and a lot of people who, who watch and listen to The Social Hour, people are at all sorts of different levels. I mean, some people are, are, are working for brands and they're just trying to figure out how Twitter can help them. Some people feel like, you know, they, they, they're, they're working really, really hard, but don't see a lot of, uh, a lot of success, you know, as far as click-through rates and, and engagement, that sort of thing. So anything that Twitter can do to make sure that businesses believe that they're a viable option is great, especially because Twitter wants to eventually um, have these businesses pay mm -hmm. for promoted tweets. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, one thing that's really great too within this uh, website is their success stories because there are literally dozens and dozens of success stories based on companies in terms of their size, their industries, the tactics they used, uh, products, goals, and all this other information. So if you uh, check out that section of the site, I would highly encourage you to do that just to be able to read case studies from specific businesses. Uh, if I go to a, a success story from a company called I Love Dogs, for example, in their listing, they have the challenge that this company face. They have the solution, the results, a 203% increase in Twitter referrals to company website, a 1,068% increase in Twitter referrals to online store, and all of these hard stats. I mean, this is the thing that I think people listening to the show and they're in social media marketing that they really want and they crave is actually proving that there is that return on investment in their social media efforts. So all of a sudden, like I said, the dozens of different uh, case studies in terms of these success stories and quotes and all this information that can really give people a sense of how 
Twitter can work well for you. So good on them for creating so much content. Yeah, I think I think it makes Twitter look good. It makes the businesses look good. And it and 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 this, you know, the, these are real success stories. So mm -hmm. it's this sort of thing that that we can all um, take some information uh, from. We've got a few folks in chat room saying, well, I don't want to see ads. So this is terrible. <laughs> well, you know, again, yeah. Sure, I, that, you know, Twitter free service and they got to make money and businesses are going to be helping them with that. I certainly would want businesses to to have the right knowledge and tools so that they are being as effective as possible rather than spammy. You know, and that's that's certainly a, a, a bright side of all of this is is when you when you have the right tools and you sort of know how Twitter works then we're all probably going to be less annoy annoyed. Or you can just use a third-party app and not see ads at all. I don't know. It's yeah, up to you. And if, but of course, you know, there are different brands that people follow, and, and those brands are trying to figure out how to really grow their communities on Twitter. Sometimes it means they're using promoted ads, but sometimes it just means that they're creating content for their fans out there. So uh, uh, regardless of anything, I don't think uh, those uh, companies are going away anytime soon. So at least Twitter provides a place for them and for people to learn more. Yeah. This is actually kind of a funny Twitter-related story. Um, this is uh, Twitter's app Vine, which is a standalone app. This, again, is the six-second sort of short bursts of a video app um, that I find actually really annoying, but I use every once in a while just because, I don't know, uh, why not? And, <laughs> uh, and this is a story about Prince, the recording artist, uh, a label, his record label, um, NPG Records, uh, NPG is short for a new power generation, which you might recall was the name of uh, Prince's band at one point. Uh, it was Prince and the New Power Generation. So, okay, so Twitter was served, uh, because again, this is the parent company of Vine, a DMCA copyright complaint for content that was published within Vine uh, because it was un what 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 uh, what the allegations were unauthorized recordings and unauthorized synchronizations uh, of eight different video clips that were hosted on Vine and asked the company to remove them. The request was sent uh, last week, March twenty second, and then if you try to look up the clips that are referenced, they no longer exist. So one assumes that Twitter said, "Yeah, yeah, okay, we'll take it <laughs> down and just not deal with this." But a Twitter spokesperson told The Next Web, this isn't the first time that Twitter received a takedown request for content that appeared on Vine. And I wonder about this, Amber, because this is kind of, you know, the, the whole thing about Vine is, if I take a Vine, it's not a necessarily a sequential six seconds of anything. If I went mm -hmm. to a Prince concert, or I don't know, a, a public event or anything, depending on the way that I shoot it, can almost be, thought of as some sort of a mashup, right? So if, if, if Prince's record label is like, well, uh, you know, I, ha I, haven't, I haven't seen the clips in question, but maybe it was somebody uh, that uh, was listening to uh, Purple Rain at home and the way that it's coming through in this fine makes the song sound disjointed and different. What does that mean? You know, is that, is that some sort of unauthorized recording and, you know, unauthorized synchronization? I have no idea if this is just Prince being way too sensitive or we can expect to see a lot more of this. I think with Prince too, you know, he has a, a reputation for doing things like this in the online space and trying to get more and more control. But I think it's time that he maybe just realizes that uh, that's not necessarily a good thing for his reputation in this uh, uh, day and age. The reality is most people just want to be able to share good music. They go to a concert and shoot a vine. I don't see what the problem is. So I think uh, this doesn't hurt anyone except for Prince. I'd be really curious uh, what to see what Bob Lefsitz has to say about this. He writes the Lefsitz letter, Sarah. I don't know if you get that email and newsletter. No. Oh, should but I? It's good. It's the only email newsletter that I read, and it's all about the music industry. Not that I'm even that immersed in the music industry, but it oftentimes he talks about what's happening in the digital space, so it's very interesting. But I bet you he has written something about this particular thing, and I'm sure he said what we may say, which is just you know uh, get over it and uh, learn that uh, you know this could be a good thing that people want to share your music and want to share experiences that they've had at your concerts. And I just it, it leaves a really bad taste in my mouth that he's done this. And uh, you know I am a fan, but uh, you know it's getting old this whole story with right. him is getting old yeah, and it's and it start it really does start to feel like do you even understand the service yeah. that you're apparently mad at really because if you did i don't quite see what the issue is i mean if we're if we're selling millions of copies of 
you know, your, your, your latest single out of the trunk of a car, well, that's, that's very different. Uh, this is just mm -hmm. kind of, it's almost ambient, really. All right, well, we talked about quite a few things. I mean, obviously a, a big, big week for Facebook, Facebook and, and Twitter as well. Um, a quick reminder that uh, what's kind of fun is that Amber and I collect stories throughout the week and then we record the Social Hour live on Fridays at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. Now, a lot of you don't watch us live and that is just fine because on demand is how uh, we uh, always, always are available to you. But if you would like to watch us live, that's fun too. We've got a chat room going, we've got people giving us feedback on Twitter and uh, and on the emails and the internets and stuff. So uh, thanks to everybody who watches and listens to us each week. Our website is twit.tv slash TSH. And uh, that's where you can find all of our past episodes and keep caught up. You can subscribe to the show if you want it just auto-downloaded each week so that you can watch or listen over the weekend or, or whenever you like. And of course, if you have feedback, if you don't want to tweet us, you're feeling shy, and <laughs> that's a great not picture of me. I <laughs> Jeff uh, Stewart, who is our editor, hates me, so that's <laughs> why he chooses things like that because he wants me to to look terrible. Uh, email us at the social hour at twit.tv if you agree that Jeff Stewart is out to get me, um, or if you just have uh, really good uh, story ideas or stuff that you'd like us to look at, or or maybe a social app that you love or hate, or or any of that good stuff. Um, and thanks for uh, thanks for all your feedback each and every week, everybody. All right, Amber. We've got uh, we've got social tips. We've got a spotlight. We've got we've got some viewer feedback. But first, let's take a moment to thank Shutterstock for sponsoring this episode of the Social Hour. The idea is is that we've all got creative projects that we may or be working on, and and maybe you need like this like like the perfect image for some sort of an advertisement or maybe you want to add something into a video, you know, do a nice push on it or or maybe you're just putting together a website and and there's, there's something that you just, you don't have in your own collection. Well, what's great about Shutterstock is you can choose from over 900,000, you heard that right, 900,000 high quality stock video clips, 2D or 3D animation and motion graphics. And they have clips in a variety of digital formats. Um, a lot come in HD as well, um, and 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 it's 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 really cool. Uh, video content. Uh, if you want to just talk about video content for a second, um, Shutterstock sources video clips from around the world, uh, puts them at your fingertips. A lot of contributors to Shutterstock are filmmakers. They're animators. Um, Shutterstock reviews each video, so you don't have to think about like, well, okay, they've got a lot of videos here, but only some of them are high quality. Uh, they, they really want to vet all of that stuff before it even goes into the library, so that, so you, really, you're just, you're just kind of looking for the stuff that you're looking for. You're adding in some keywords or, 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 or searching via genre, and you're finding those clips. Um, they also add over 10,000 video clips each week, so every time you visit, you're going to find something new. If you look once, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be different in about a week. Also, Shutterstock gives video content you need to bring your creative projects to that next level. Search tools, huge image library of photos and, you know, vector graphics, icons, all sorts of stuff. Uh, Shutterstock is, is uh, it's the real deal. You can try Shutterstock today by signing up for a free account. That's pretty cool. You don't need a credit card. You don't have to worry about being on the hook for anything. It's really, really easy. You just start an account and you start using Shutterstock and then you can save uh, video and photo selections. And when you decide to purchase, just use the offer code SOCIALHOUR4, SOCIALHOUR4, and new accounts will receive 30% off any package. That's a really good deal. So once you're ready to purchase, use that offer code SOCIALHOUR4 at Shutterstock.com for 30% off new accounts. And we thank them for sponsoring this episode of The Social Hour. Yeah, Sarah, this uh, service saved my life. Uh, literally last week, I was preparing for a presentation. I do a lot of public speaking, as you know, and uh, I'm always looking for new images. And uh, I went in here and I built my entire presentation out of images that I found uh, within Shutterstock. So uh, super helpful for anyone who is building a presentation, whether you're pre presenting within your company or to a group. It is just a wonderful service. And there, like you said, there's so many different images. So uh, I've taken advantage of this one a lot in the past uh, week or so. So Love it. Yeah, me too. Very I, helpful. I, especially, you know, what's funny is like, you know, there, there are so many, so, so I, we both read so much tech news and news really in general. And it's like, 
so many of those photos, you know, that's that's the sort of thing that a lot of these companies, they, you know, they've got Shutterstock accounts and, and you're able to pull an image really quickly that is relevant to something that you're writing about. But then you bring videos into the mix and it's great. I mean, if you are, if you're creating videos, a, a, you know, a lot of your footage uh, can can be provided to you uh, with, with a service like Shutterstock rather than... <laughs> I mean, to, you know, go out into the tundra and shoot all your own uh, footage. It just it just makes sense. So yeah, uh, Shutterstock, cool. great, great solution. All right, Amber, let's move on to a social tip. Uh, this is uh, <laughs> something called peg leg, and I, I don't know what this is. <laughs> Okay, so I just found this this afternoon. I thought it was kind of fun because I had an experience recently where I was uh, hanging out with my son who's just four years old. He loves to watch movies on YouTube, particularly uh, the Ghostbusters. He loves Ghostbusters. And uh, the Ghostbusters movie is available on YouTube, the full movie. And uh, when I stumbled across Peg Leg, I thought this was cool because basically it helps you find full length movies on YouTube. So uh, you can go there. I think they have, you know, seven or 800 movies that are listed. Of course, some of these movies get taken down because the companies and their copyright issues. So uh, I'm not condoning uh, that you necessarily watch movies uh, illegally. However, if you choose to find out which ones are available, Peg Leg can help. So it's a beautifully designed site. And I just read about it on TechCrunch this afternoon. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Very good cool. One. Peg Leg. That's an I odd know. choice, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know what to say about the name, <laughs> but it is certainly memorable, I guess. Sure. That's the good news. Yes. No, I love this. I love this. Um, I, I actually didn't see this story earlier. I'm not exactly sure how I missed it. Um, but uh, but that's the thing. I mean, YouTube is such a, you know, you, sometimes you feel like you're just like diving into a very, very large, you know, you're looking for that grain of sand in, in, in a big, big hill of sand. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so so that's very cool. It's, it's nice to be able to, um, to weed out uh, what is unnecessary. It, no matter what you're looking for on YouTube, but particularly full-length movies. I know a lot yep. of people who um, look for these sorts of things for their kids. You know, they, oh, yeah. uh, uh, because YouTube, it's you know, sometimes I've got a friend who they don't have a TV, they have a computer, and her son watches stuff on YouTube. And she says, oh, it's always great when she can find something that's long enough because otherwise... Uh, a clip <laughs> ends after five minutes and then he clicks on something and then, it, you know, it gets crazy pretty quickly. And so. then they click on something else, which is totally inappropriate. And then they click on something else. And uh, trust me, I have been down that rabbit hole and it is not pretty because you never know what you're going to find. And uh, I'm glad a service like this exists out there. So just like you said, you know, so you have an hour and a half of continuous content that is uh, perhaps appropriate for uh, viewing in terms of different ages. Because <laughs> yes. otherwise it's a messy place. Messy indeed, uh, and and great. Hey, I I I love YouTube, but uh, it's it's easy to uh, to go down a rabbit hole for sure. It is. I wanted to spotlight an app that I am just becoming familiar with, Amber. This is a social app called Whisper. Um, I found okay. out about it uh, via the blog Pano Daily, and the story was is that a. Um, uh, a, a venture firm called Lightspeed had invested about $3 million in Whisper, which is called sort of the Secrets app. And I thought, what? Um, it's based down in L.A., and I guess it has really good traction, especially with uh, some of the younger folks, kind of college community type thing. So I went ahead and downloaded it. And what's interesting about Whisper, this is, this is going to remind a lot of people of Post Secret. That's uh, the website that's been around for a while where... People post, course, you know, yeah. secrets, you know, on the condition that they're anonymous online. Same idea. Um, <laughs> this particular one says, "I wonder if my dog is traumatized from seeing me change in front of him his whole life." Uh, if you click the uh, 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 the next one, day four in the yard, my milkshake has melted and is beginning to spoil. Still no sign of the boys. Oh, I see. It's milkshake bringing boys to the yard reference. Um, I would take nothing. Oh, uh, that one is probably not really appropriate, and and so on and so forth. And the, the idea is that you're actually sharing more intimate things than you would ever share if you had a profile and a name associated with this. Okay, well, why is this a social app? Because you've got, in this Bill Cosby uh, anonymous sh uh, whisper, you've got 558 people who have liked it. You've got eight different replies here down at the bottom. And then I also, well, if I wanted to shout it, I could go ahead and share this on a variety of social networks. So that probably brings a lot of people in. But also, I have the option to privately message the person who posted this in the first place, and I don't know who they are yet. 
Now, of course, we could decide to share uh, the details of each other if we wanted to, but that sort of takes it to another level. Uh, and, and, and the person, of course, could, could choose to engage with me or not. Now, what's interesting is when I looked on this, you know, if I said, like, who are you? I'm not going to send this, by the way, but just, you know, just to, to show, I, I could start to initiate a conversation. This Pandora Daily article says that Whisper's making money because if you want to private message people, that is a um, either 99 cents per conversation or something like $5 a month for just unlimited uh, conversations. Now, I just to see if it worked or how it worked earlier today went ahead and I found a little uh, a little uh, a whisper secret that mm -hmm. uh, seemed pretty benign and I went ahead and messaged this person and um, and and it didn't prompt me to pay so I wonder if I get maybe a few messages for free type of a thing and then eventually it's an in-app purchase I'm not really sure but that 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 is sort of an interesting uh, revenue model amber is that if I want to be able to I don't know, feel close to this person who said something that was over Sherry and then we kind of take it offline, so to speak, then I would pay for that. I'm not used to doing anything like that. Hmm. But I'm looking at a variety of these these posts. I mean, they have a lot of engagement on these. Really? Yeah. Huh. See, that's. I feel like it's an entire world that I'm interested in, but I don't know if I would use something like this. Like, it feels like it has a pretty set audience for it. Would you agree with that? Yeah, this is not for me. But then mm -hmm. again, you know, I, neither is Snapchat. And, you know, it's not because people aren't using it. It's because, I don't know, maybe we're just not of the generation um, that's yes. interested in stuff like this. Yeah, it's, I mean, I think it's part of the problem, too, is when you're so used to sharing everything publicly, the idea that there is any privacy online to me is just obviously a total myth. So <laughs> I just, I don't even, I can't even imagine having that type of uh, communication and uh, not and feeling comfortable with it, I guess. That's part of it. Yeah. You know, actually, Colts Girl got back to me. Um, she, had, <laughs> she had posted, well, good. Look, I made a new friend. Can I go back to this original guy? Hmm. Uh, well, she had posted something. So that was, yeah, that was sort of my test private message. So we're friends now. I still don't know who she is or if it's a she. Could be a dog, grumpy cat or something like that. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so that's Lightspeed. It's a completely free app. Um, this is uh, something that, you know, I, I downloaded. I don't know, I checked it out. I'm always kind of curious, Amber. It's like, are these things, that, you know, do they have some sort of a hook that, that we just don't understand? But to me, this seems like it's an interesting idea and you know the anonymous thing is great, but it's already got its share of 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 criticism from people saying, you know, these sorts of things are a haven for people behaving badly yeah. because again, they uh, they're they're encouraged to say things that might be sort of controversial or shocking because that's what the service is 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 kind of based on, um, with no real repercussions. Yeah, oh, it could be a whole string of issues. Uh, speaking of issues, if you uh, don't like someone on Twitter who's engaging with you, of course you can block them. But based on uh, this message, was this on This Week in Law, Sarah? Is that where it came from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Denise and friends uh, were uh, at the end of uh, this week's This Week in Law show. We're, we're uh, referencing uh, the Twitter uh, support uh, account, which is actually a really great account to follow for a variety of reasons. You know, it's just it's just sort of designed to help us know, you know, if they're having, if they're experiencing downtime outages or or just kind of tips and tricks. And uh, they mentioned something that I thought we should really pass along here on the social hour if we haven't mentioned it before, or or at least in a while. And that's if I am to. Uh, Let's just pretend, Amber, you and I get into a terrible fight. We <laughs> okay, are not pretend. friends, and we need All a break. Right. And I say, you know what, I'm just going to block you. I'm going to block you on Twitter because I don't want you to see what I'm saying, and that's just, you know, that's what I'm going to do. Blocking a user on Twitter doesn't actually keep them out of your timeline. The only way to do that is to actually set your timeline to private. What it does is it, it kind of makes you disappear from my experience. So I can safely be having a ball on Twitter, and if you at reply to me, I would never get it. Um, if you, you know, retweet something, I'm not going to see it. Uh, the conversations that you have with people who I'm also following would be stripped out so that I'm not seeing conversations between you and another person if for some reason 
you know, that's upsetting to me. But you can still access my profile. That's yeah. That's something that I think people could be unclear about. So I thought it was I thought it was a good idea to mention. And honestly, yeah. remember, I had kind of forgotten really. No, it's so smart because I, I do think people think when they block someone, that means all of a sudden, you know, they're not able to see anything. Of course, that's not true. So I don't think we've ever mentioned that on the show. So that's a really handy tip. Uh, another thing I don't think we've ever mentioned on the show is anything to do with a story like this, because <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of shocking, this particular story uh, for our social uh, marketing story of the week. And this is all about Target and a very recent uh, fiasco they faced in the social media space. Uh, basically, they had uh, a couple of dresses. One was a um, uh, regular size dresses, and then they have a plus size version. And the plus size version of this dress was called Manatee Gray based on the color of the dress. And uh, the strange thing was that the standard sizes, uh, it, was, it was called Dark Heather Gray. Of course, someone noticed this uh, very quickly on Twitter, uh, got very upset, and uh, sent out this tweet that uh, basically, you know, questioned Target says, uh, what the Plus sized uh, women get manatee gray while standard sizes are dark heather gray at Target, not buying it. And things escalated from there. Yikes. Um, okay. Well, hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is a tough one, right? I, I don't think, I don't think, I, I don't think that this was meant to upset anybody. This is probably one of these things that there are lots of, there are lots of, um, you know, copywriters that work for, for a variety of retail stores, you know, who have to explain, you know, this beautiful flowy and manatee gray dress over off the shoulder. There, there, are, there are a lot of ways to kind of spice up just a, a, you know, a gray piece of clothing. So I think that the fact that it's manatee gray, you know, is only coincidentally an issue because of the plus size nature of it. I mean, if it was manatee gray for the regular size and dark heather gray for the plus size, would people say, oh, I know why you changed it because you didn't want us to think that it, you know, it's, I don't, the thing I mean, is, if you've ever really seen happened. a manatee, I mean, it's a massive animal. So right. it would be like calling something elephant gray. Like it really, you know, in the water, it's, it's massive, right? There's manatee all over uh, South Florida when I go down there and they're they're big animals. So I just, it seems like, I, I hope that it was just an honest mistake, but I'm going to be honest with you. The first thing I thought was uh, that, uh, you know, perhaps it was intentional. I'm not saying people should, uh, you know, uh, take it to heart necessarily. However, it just seems like this, you know, was a, pretty embarrassing situation for Target. Pretty embarrassing for sure. I mean, do yes. you think that there's a disgruntled employee in here? So, I mean, I, I, I guess that's always an, uh, that, that's, that's always a possibility. Um, I, I don't see what you get out of it, except I, it's very, <laughs> if that, if this was a, at all intentional, it's extremely rude. It Why not a dolphin, so ridiculous. Sarah? I have a hard time believing it. Why not a dolphin? You know what I mean? At least pick right. an animal that people maybe know better than uh, a manatee. Uh, I don't know. It just it's just very strange. Uh, I, you know, Twitter responded or sorry, Target responded fairly quickly on Twitter. It looks like uh, based on uh, this uh, string or thread on uh, Huffington Post that within 24 hours they uh, had responded. Uh, someone from customer service got in touch with someone at Target who said that they are fixing things ASAP. And uh, I know there was an explanation posted on Forbes about uh, even more about what had happened. But, um, you know, I guess the good news in terms of social media marketing is that uh, they did respond in a pretty efficient manner. The good news, maybe? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they could have just, you know, changed it to rat gray and then everybody would be fine, right? It's a nice little animal, you know, can get into tight spaces. I don't know. I, 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 it seems really unfortunate. And you know what? It's The more I think about it, the more I'm like, it does seem pretty weird. I mean, it was, this, it was exactly the same. It was the same piece of, it was the same item. There's just you know regular and uh, regular and manatee sizing. Although we did we did get some feedback. Geek Cons um, on Twitter said um, this is blown out of, way out of proportion. People need to relax and do some research before getting worked up. And yeah, it sounds like Twitter uh, Twitter Target uh, did what it could to try to squelch uh, the issue as quickly as possible. So if someone's reading wh about what happened and doesn't realize that Target has already said this is this is a terrible accident, we're very sorry. That's kind of how people get really, really worked up where they might not be otherwise. Yeah, it just, I mean, I feel like it'll be interesting to see if more of the story comes out because I just imagine, you know, a team sitting around looking at that color gray and thinking, wow, this 
this looks like a, a manatee gray. You know, it's just manatee is not something that rolls off the tongue except for it being a really large uh, uh, animal. So, uh, or, you know, anyway, I don't know. We'll see what happens with this one, but they responded quickly. So uh, that's the good news. Yeah. It's, if you're like, hey, Sarah, when I say manatee, what color do you think of? I, I, <laughs> it would, it would give me pause. I, I, I probably say, oh, I, don't, I guess I'd say gray. I don't even know. Heather gray. That I, that I you get. get. That I or, get, yes. Or dolphin, Sarah. Or dolphin, yes. An adorable <laughs> <Dolphins are beautiful. laughs> creature can jump and do tricks yeah. and stuff like that. Exactly. Well, uh, Target has learned something from this. Um, now I um, am going to go into uh, my next uh, Target store. Uh, we've got a, I've got a new Target that's not too far from where I live. And I'm going to try to find this manatee dress mm -hmm. and uh, see if it's cute. You know? Look at all the other colors, the names of all the other colors on everything you buy. Yeah, I'm going I'm <laughs> to see what I can know. get offended about next. Um, but, <laughs> and uh, tweet yeah. it, Sarah. I guess the, uh, the moral of the story is make sure that your sizing, is, uh, your sizing colors and colors are consistent. Right? Yeah. And try not to make people feel like they're big, large manatees. That's just, nobody really likes that. It's general advice. <laughs> uh, we love hearing from you, everybody, whether it's on Twitter or you're emailing us or you're giving us a call. Did you know that you could do that? Or sending us a video with some feedback or, 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 or ideas or you want to go on a rant and rave. That's all fine as long as you're not driving. The social hour at twit.tv is how you can reach us via email. Our Google voicemail number is 2626-SOCIAL. That's 2626-S-O-C-I-A-L. Or if you want to record that video, don't send us the video because we don't want to open attachments. But if you upload it somewhere like YouTube, for example, send us the link. We'll absolutely try to add it into uh, a, a future edition of this fine, fine show. Hey, before we get into your uh, rat or fad area, Amber, I thought maybe we could take a moment to thank 99designs. They're our second sponsor of this fine, fine program. And they're awesome. 99designs. How do I des describe what it does? It pretty much connects you with some of the world's best graphic designers so that you can get fast, affordable graphic designs created for you. What you do is you say, all right, 99designs, I've got this. I've got this really, really, really great website idea, but I'm certainly not any sort of a designer, and I, you know, I want this really neat kind of like header, or maybe you know, a cover pa uh, photo for something like Facebook, or you know, business cards, or menus. I mean, it, it's really anything that's that's kind of visual, where you really you really want to have a design that's going to wow people. So you tell 99 Designs what you're looking for. And then dozens of designers from their community will start submitting designs created for you based on, based on your criteria. Then you say, okay, designers, you know, maybe you've got like four that you really like and you give them some feedback. And then you select and pay for your favorite one. So it's not just one designer that you're working with where maybe there's a lot of back and forth and you just kind of go like, ah, this, you know, she doesn't get what I want and we're not speaking the same language. You can really pick from a pool of creative people and you get that design that, that really speaks to you. They have more than 210,000 graphic designers, so quite a few folks, and they're uh, worldwide, and they're available to work on your project right now. 99designs also has customer support 24-7, it's world-class, over the phone, email, or chat, so depending on how you like to get your, your customer support, uh, you've got options there. And then they'll also give you a complimentary design consultation uh, with San Francisco, well, with, with their design team in San Francisco, for all your branding needs. So that's really helpful. You know, if you, you know, just kind of need to get need to get a little advice. And there's a 100% money back guarantee. So you don't have to worry too much about getting too far into a project um, and, and not being happy with it. They want you to be happy. You got logo design starting at 300 bucks. You've got print marketing collateral like flyers and 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 greeting cards, product packaging. At, at 200 bucks, starting at 200 bucks. Uh, t-shirts, Twit, Twit used 99 Designs to get mm -hmm. our latest round of t-shirts made. They're really cool looking. Uh, hoodies and more, that starts at 199 as well. Mobile app design, you can really get creative here. So if you're interested, you can start right now for as low as $199, $199 for your own custom graphic design. And if you visit 99designs.com slash social hour, that's 99, two nines, uh, designs.com slash social hour. You get a $99 power pack of services for free. 
you're asking me right now, what's a power pack? Gives you more designer time, gives the more attention really uh, dedicated to you. And 99designs uh, will feature your design project in their marketplace and you'll get nearly twice as many designs. It also just kind of spreads the word of what you're working on as well. Uh, if you want to talk to somebody about this, dial 800-513-1678. That's a number that, that 99 Designs created just for us, the Twit, the twit audience here at the Social Hour. 800-513-1678 to get started now. And we thank 99 Designs for their support of the Social Hour. All right, Amber, it's rad or fad time. <laughs> All right. So this is a fun one, Sarah. We probably talked about Shazam on the show before. A uh, very popular tool that's been used for a while. Well, it uh, looks like based on this article I found on the Daily Mail that uh, Shazam is working on some technology that would make it easy not only to be able to uh, identify songs and music that's being played, but also to be able to identify where certain fashion items are from. So in this headline, it says a uh, new fashion app will let you find clothes you love in seconds. Um, it kind of uh, alludes to the fact that you could do this maybe by uh, pointing your phone at a stranger. But later on in the article, they talk more about an interactive TV version of the app where you'll be able to find out what your favorite stars on television are wearing, which seems like a more likely scenario. So um, kind of interesting, I think. I, I'm not totally clear exactly how it's all going to work out and no data on when it will be launched. But uh, the evolution of Shazam. Yeah, Shazam is, they're, they're very... They're, they're really bullish on the whole television slash commercials. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, market. I, I see I, I see more and more of that. And, and there have been stories floating around of, you know, how Shazam is going to transition from just like, oh, it's music discovery, music ID, you know, in a bar. What am I listening to? To these sorts of uh, partnerships. I almost... I wonder, Amber, I mean, how, how often am I going to see somebody on TV wearing something that I say, oh my gosh, so cute, and I'm able to Shazam it, and it's going to be, like, affordable and, uh, you know, available in my size, and, you know, it's, it's like, I mean, I, we've both worked in TV, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you get to wear, particularly when, you know, you're on a sitcom where there's a big budget and that sort of thing, it's like, it's not really realistic for the rest of us to be buying it, it's almost like, you know, Shazamming stuff at runway shows. You know, it's, it's supposed to look good. It's not necessarily supposed to transition into real life. But then again, you know, what if, yeah, the next time I watch New Girl, everybody on New Girl is wearing, you know, really affordable stuff from, I don't know, a, a store that is known for affordable things like Forever 21 or even Target, right? Mm. Uh, and, and then it kind of becomes this fun thing where you are interacting that much more and using the app and, 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 and whatever partner Shazam has made with this particular um, uh, department store or, or equivalent uh, ends up getting a lot more exposure. It's interesting. I, I'm, I'm trying to be optimistic about how mm. it would roll out. Yeah, I know. It's a tough one, right? Because I figure if anyone can do it, Shazam is going to figure out a way to do it because, they, like you said, they've had so much success uh, with audio, right? And uh, they've done a bunch of amazing things in terms of advertising on television and that type of integration. So I think that I'm optimistic about how they will be able to create this technology that will have that uh, television viewing audience being very engaged. I just, uh, I wonder if it's going to work as well at, for fashion because I do often, you know, I've watched shows before and I hear a song and I really like the song and I think, hey, you know, I want to download that song. But I can't think of any moment where I saw someone wearing something and I thought, hell, that would look great on me. I want to look it up. But maybe I'm just not that type of girl. I don't know. Yeah, maybe not. I, yeah. <laughs> I got my head down on my computer. I'm basically not looking at what people are wearing. I'm uh, on my iPad. <laughs> so that's an issue. Yeah, or, or maybe there's an element of fantasy, right? It's like if I'm watching something on TV, it's like I'm not trying to imagine myself recreating it in any way. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know, it's, <sighs> the, I feel like the, um, the whole fashion and tech thing, that so sometimes it works really well and then sometimes there's these somewhat clunky types of iterations like we hear with Shazam and, and uh, I don't know, I, I just, <laughs> can you imagine being in a coffee shop or something, you know, and someone's like, <laughs> you know, like I love your, I love your outfits, you all the time. Yeah. and it's it's disconcerting kind of thing. But I know. Uh, that's the problem. 
I don't know. No, I will say it. though, sometimes Amber, sometimes I'll be like, oh my gosh, those sh those shoes are so cute. And for whatever reason, I'm in a situation where it's like I don't feel comfortable asking this perfect stranger, you know, mm. where she got her cute boots or her pants or whatever. So maybe maybe there, maybe there is something to this. Maybe this is more than just a fad. Yeah, you know, I think it could be kind of rad, I, but I, I'm not 100% sold. And I think it will work depending on the type of television program. Sarah, and I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say perhaps we watch the type of programming that maybe this isn't going to work for. But if there are people who watch a lot of, uh, I'm thinking like uh, that fashion star show, the reality fashion star, star show. So if they watch shows like that that are based around fashion and kind of that celebrity, maybe like entertainment shows, mm -hmm. then it could work there, maybe. Yeah. So I could be rad. Yeah, I mean, that's Maybe. sort of like shazamming a song on a show like The Voice, where, mm -hmm. you know, you'd, you'd, you'd be able to, you know, get a link to, to download, you know, the album of the original uh, singer or that sort of thing. Shows that, yeah, maybe center around um, either clothing or fashion or, or just kind of the visual element of everything. That would yeah. work better, like the Rachel Zoe project. You know, it's like a mm -hmm. reality show about a woman who is a designer and... and yes, you know, it would work. That Maybe not so much on like a dark thriller, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the uh, Wire. Not so good there. Shazam yeah, the Wire. Edition. One know. of my favorite series. I'm not sure I'm going to be shazamming any of the clothing. Uh, funny, uh, Space Guy One on Twitter just sent us a tweet and said, Felicia Day ran into someone today with, who was wearing the same sweater. Guess that person shazammed her. Uh, very cute. However, the technology does not yet exist, but uh, maybe things like that could happen. All of a sudden, people start dressing like you. Is that uh, yeah. good? I'm not sure. Right. Yeah. And then, and then, that's the worst, especially if it's a very specific sweater. I haven't, I haven't seen this Instagram that she took, but that's the worst. Um, I even feel weird, Amber's, because I, I, I have this, you know, fairly new car. I don't know mm -hmm. what my problem is. I know you can't <laughs> Shazam. Well, you don't really need to Shazam a car, but, but, uh, but uh, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll pass somebody on the freeway, or they'll pass me, and it's the exact same car, and I feel weird. I feel like. They're looking at me and I'm looking at them because we have the same car. Is that weird? Mm. Yeah, I guess that's a little kind weird. Of weird. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't really thought about that. Hmm. I guess that would be strange though, now that I think about it. It's it's almost like in some way I have to I feel obligated to like like yeah, look, we're driving the same car. Yeah, I don't know. It's Whatever. This is just a uh, please don't please don't introduce Shazam for cars. I, I have it. I have it bad as it is. I don't know. <laughs> that uh, is too hilarious. Oh, Amber. All right. Well, we've uh, we've come to the end of our hour and probably not a moment too soon um, because I'm starting to go off the deep end. But thanks, everybody who who joined us uh, for the show live, everybody who's watching us afterwards. Maybe you're watching on the weekend. Hope you're having a really great one. Hope the weather's getting better uh, wherever it is that you might live. Or you know, if you're um, if you're in the southern hemisphere, I guess you're in you're you're getting into you know you're deep into autumn at this point. So maybe you've been enjoying lots of warm weather and you're looking forward to it getting colder. Uh, but that's it for us. Uh, reminder: if you do want to watch us live next week, we're live on Fridays at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. Our website is twit.tv/tsh, and uh, you can always find our show on iTunes. Um, I watch some of our other Twit programming on on uh, the podcast app, on the Apple TV. I mean, you've got all sorts of options. Um, so thanks, everybody, who joins us every week. Um, until next time, I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm Amber MacArthur, and we'll see you soon.